friends welcome back uh, today we are going to learn the next part of molecular basis of inheritance till now we have been looking at in different videos we have been looking at different experiments given out by Grift, Avery McLeod McCarty, then Hershey and Chase's experiment all this leading up to understanding the structure of the DNA. So today uh, we will in depth understand the double helix model which was proposed by Watson and Crick in 1953 and as you remember uh, they used different data one from x-ray diffraction by Wilkin and Franklin another is the rule called as Charjaf rule to come up with a double helix model so let us understand the double helix model today this is the model that gave them um, Nobel Prize for the same okay so what is DNA? DNA consists of, this is a double helix model that we are learning. It consists of two chains, 1 and 2, running in opposite direction. Okay, so this going in opposite direction, there is a word for it that is anti-parallel. When I say opposite direction, what does that mean? We will look into right now. Okay, so there are two chains, first chain and the second chain. If we remove the twist on it and we if we keep it flat the two chains would look something like this one chain going in this direction and other chain going in this direction all right so one of the chains we will take out and learn the structure of it so that we can completely understand what's going on so this is one of the chains that I've taken out from the DNA structure Okay, so you can see that there are certain things that are repeating. You can see from here, this unit, this unit and this part. Again, the same thing is repeating. Again, the same thing is repeating and so on. So these un repeated units are called as nucleotides. That's why many nucleotides form the polynucleotide chain. So what exactly is a nucleotide? Let's see. A nucleotide consists of a sugar unit, this part. This part is called as a sugar unit. It consists of the part till here. Then it consists of a phosphate unit. So sugar and phosphate. And one more thing you can see is something that is coming inside the chain. If you look into over here, here, this chain is kept in a vertical manner. You can see that the sugar and the phosphate are on the side. And there is something that is protruding into the chain. That is called as the nitrogen base. And if you look at it closely, all the nitrogen bases, this one, this one, this one and this one, are having come a different letter to represent it. A, T, G and C. That is because these protruding nitrogen bases are slightly different from each other. And each of them have a name according to the structure. A stands for adenine, T for thymine, G for guanine and C for cytosine. This is something that you need to learn. Okay. Now, we will go back to this two chains to see one more concept. That is, each of these nitrogen bases which are protruding into the chain pair with the nitrogen base of the other chain. What is that? required for it is required so that if you have two chains let's say you have two chains one like this another one like this they will not be kept together unless there is a single or uh, unless there is some kind of bond between them a chemical bond should be there so that both of them can be um, joined together isn't it so the same way there are these bonds chemical bonds between them between this amino, uh, this nitrogen base and the other one, this and the other one and so on. These chemical bonds are nothing but hydrogen bonds in this case. And if you notice, the bonding between A and T is a double hydrogen bond and G and C is a triple hydrogen bond. Now moving back, so till now I hope it is clear, the nucleotide chain forms the DNA many nucleotide chains, two nucleotide chains running in the opposite direction. Let's understand that part that is opposite direction. Alright, 
So we already know that a nucleotide, when we talk about a nucleotide chain, many nucleotides arrange one after the other. And when we say one nucleotide, it has three units, a sugar unit, a phosphate unit and a nitrogen base. Let's see how the sugar is numbered in such a manner that we can understand what is meant by this 5 dash uh, end or the 5 prime end and the 3 dash end or the 3 prime end. Look at this sugar. The sugar is called as a pentose sugar because it has 5 carbons in it and there is a particular way in which the carbons are numbered. This is the first, when we look at this structure, whenever they draw a structure like this, it means that there is a carbon over here, carbon over here, carbon here, carbon here and there is a carbon here. Okay, all these are numbered in such a manner that carbon 1, carbon 2, third carbon, fourth carbon and the fifth carbon. And if you notice, in the fifth carbon is attached the phosphate groups. Okay, and on the first carbon is attached the nitrogen base. This much you should keep in mind. One more thing is, now this structure we will move into the nucleotide chain and see how it is. Alright, so this um, picture you have to imagine it just reversed in a manner that this is over here. Okay, this for the first carbon is over here. Second one, third one, fourth one and the fifth one is this to which the phosphate is attached. Now this entire unit is connected to the next nucleotide by the third position. So this is the third position to which the next nucleotide is connected and so on. That's why when we look at one chain, in the first chain if you notice, the third position where OH is, OH is here. This is, that is kept free in the first chain, one end. Other end of the same chain, the phosphate which is, have, uh, which is there in the fifth position is free. In the opposite direction, the opposite will happen. That is third position will be free in this end and fifth position will be free with the other end. Alright, so that is how you give polarity or direction to both the chains. Now this chain runs in this particular direction and the other chain is running in the this direction and that why what is the term for that anti-parallel opposite direction the nucleotides run and the term is anti-parallel few more things to remember every time there is an adenine or the nucleotide a it always pairs with thymine whenever there is a g or guanine it always pairs with cytosin these are some of the rules of the dna and also adenine and um, the pairing that is adenine always pairs with thymine guanine always pairs with cytosine this also you should remember what kind of bond is it the bond is hydrogen bond over here this is a double hydrogen bond and over here it is a triple hydrogen bond that also you need to know few more concepts that are given in your textbook is um, the num length of the DNA depends upon the base pairing. How many base pairs are there? So these numbers that are given in your textbook can come for MCQ. So please be clear with that as well. Okay. So I hope till now it is clear. So we have understood the double helix model depending on these two concepts it was proposed and this is the double helix model. In the upcoming class we will understand what is meant by charge of rule uh, and central dogma. Uh, we will also make another video on measles and styles experiment. So keep watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please share all the videos with your friends as well. Thank you.